Hey, Crazy Bill here today, and today I'm going to tell you guys how to connect to a Raspberry Pi without a keyboard or a mouse or a monitor. Stay tuned, I'll show you how. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi. Basically, I guess it's called headless mode. Without a keyboard, without a mouse, without a monitor. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero. Kind of a pain in the butt if you're going to try and do a regular Raspberry Pi kind of setup where a keyboard and mouse because you only get these two little micro USB ports. And if you want to see my review on the Raspberry Pi Zero, you can take a look at that right here. Basically, this is a very basic Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this is like the base model. Now these are great, they're like 10 bucks, but if you want a kit, it's gonna be more around 30, 40 bucks because you're gonna need the adapter for the micro USB, there's one that's power, and then you're gonna need like a USB connector and all this other stuff, and if you just wanna make it for a simple project, it gets a little cumbersome that you gotta buy all these extra parts just to hook up to it. So I'm gonna show you today how to set up your SD card, so that way it already has Wi-Fi built into it, and it already has a way that you can SSH into it. So let's get on the computer, I'll show you how to set up the SD card with Raspberry Pi and then I'll show you what files you need to put in pre-installed so that this will work basically out of the box. So what are you going to need? Obviously you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. In this case we are using a Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the best case scenario for one of these but you could do this with any Raspberry Pi. You're also going to need a micro SD card with an adapter just in case your computer does not have the micro SD slot which not a lot of them do but they do have this SD card. So we'll take this SD card and put it into the computer. Like so. Okay, so here we are on the computer. The first thing we need to do is go to raspberrypi.org. We need the operating system, guys. So what we're gonna do is go to download, and I'll leave a link in the description down below for where to go. I just download Raspbian right here. And there's other options, Raspberry with a full desktop API. I'm just gonna download this one right here. I'm just going to download the full version right here, so we'll just download the zip file because I don't have a torrent anymore. Let that download. Wow, that's taking a really long time. Why that's going on, I want you guys to jump over to Etcher. This is a free piece of software we're going to download and you can pick your operating system. And this is an easier way than the way I've showed you in the past, writing a Mac script. I realize not everybody has a Mac and I usually show it that way because for people that do have a Mac, I just wanted to show them that you could just do it through terminal. But we're not going to use terminal this time. What we're going to do is just download this. It's called Etcher. So download that as well. I already have it right here, and we're going to get that started as soon as this is done downloading, which is taking forever, which I don't understand because I have 200 megabytes per second, so I guess it's just their server. So one last piece of software that you're going to need, it's called Atom, and it's atom.io. The reason why you need this software is most software, like Pages, have enriched text and what basically what that is is there's text in the background a code that's happening in the background that you can't see that it messes up any file that you're trying to write to so by downloading this you are making sure that no mistakes can be made as far as the text that you are writing the files that you are writing because these files even though you can't see the rich text messes it up the rich text will throw a monkey wrench in you won't understand why it's not working so to alleviate that problem download this piece of software it's free again i have it here we'll get rid of all this you're gonna close all these out so there you go we got Adam. So our download should be complete, and it is. Let's go to the viewfinder. This is the file right here. We're gonna unzip it. All right, that's unzipped. Make life easier. We're gonna move it to the desktop. I'm gonna move it off screen to the desktop. All right, so we'll close out of that. We got the image on the desktop. We have your SD card in there, and we're gonna open up Etcher. And we're gonna select an image. And what do you know? No, the, not my screen recordings. We're going to get the Raspberry Pi full image. We'll open that up. Boom, that goes in there. And it does see my generic media storage device, which is disk 4. Double check that. And that is 32 gigs. That's good. And we're going to start it. 
it puts that up there. You just put in your password. It's a protection through the Mac. I don't know if it's a protection on Windows, but you just have to do that. Now we just have to go through the process of flashing the card. So this is going to take, it says ETA right down here. Well, same four minutes, three minutes. It's going pretty fast. Let that do its thing. Why we're doing that, we need to create two files. So we're going to open up Adam and we're going to create a new file. The first file we're going to create is real easy, guys. Leave it blank, and we're going to go to File, Save As, SSH. I want to save it to the desktop. Bam, that's it for that file. Now we're going to create another new file. This is what I'm putting in. First, you're going to put in the country. Then you're going to put in this information that gives you the network. Basically, copy and paste this into your file. I will try to leave this in the description down below, but sometimes YouTube doesn't like me putting stuff like this in. So pause the screen now. This is the way the code should look. Only thing that you need to change in between these parentheses is your router name or your network name, depending on if they're the same or if they're different. Password, what you use to log into your network. You change those two things you keep the parentheses now we're gonna save this file out and we're gonna to go to file save as and we're gonna call it WAP supplicant dot config so this is gonna set up our Wi-Fi we're gonna save this to the desktop boom there it is right there so let's close this out we don't need it anymore get rid of that and what we're gonna do is unfortunately our SD card got ejected after etcher was done so we're gonna pull out the SD card out of your computer and you're gonna push it back in and it should show up let's see there it is it's boot so this is your SD card right now with the Raspberry Pi operating system on it we're gonna open it up we're going to click and drag the SSH file in there so now we have the SSH capability and the Wi-Fi with your Wi-Fi information. So all that information's in there now. We're going to close it. We're going to eject it. Give it a couple seconds. We're going to pull it out. All right, so at this point, we have the SD card formatted. We have the SSH file in there. We have the Wi-Fi file in there. We're going to just pull out the little SD card. You're going to grab your Raspberry Pi. In this case, it's a zero. And you're going to place it right in here, like so. And now I'm going to connect this to power. Now, if you're using a Raspberry Pi Zero, it tells you which one is the power. You can use either or for power, but there's one that's actually just USB and one that's power. And it does say PWR for power. So it is this one right here because it has a PWR on it. So that's the power. Just in case you do want to add a USB port to it. Maybe you have another project that you're working on. Okay, so now you have it connected to power. The problem here now is you need to know what the IP address of the Pi is on your network. So what we're gonna do is, and I showed this off once before, it's a little app called Finger, fin fi Finger, whatever. Anyway, it's a little app. We're gonna click on it. It should pick up the new IP address of the Pi. And in, in this instance, it actually puts it as Raspberry Pi, which I have several versions of Raspberry Pi. I do a lot of things with Raspberry Pis, so there's gonna be a couple on them. They're gonna be grayed out, so if you do that as well, they will be grayed out. You gotta look for the one that actually is actually highlighted and actually shows you. It's in dark lettering, and this is all according if you did it right. All right, so it looks like everything was set up correctly. If you're having problems or you don't see it, that means you did not do it correctly. Go through it again. Make sure you write everything out correctly or check your network settings. Make sure you got the password and the router name correct. Mine is 10.0.1.140. So that's what I'm going to SSH into. Showing up on the network, really excited. So let's go into the computer and SSH into it now. Is I have the IP address, so we're gonna type in terminal. If you're using a PC, you gotta use putty. I'm on a Mac, so all I have to do is type in terminal and it'll give me a portal to the actual Raspberry Pi. With my IP address, I I'm going to put in SSH space pi at whatever the IP address that you have, that's where it goes. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask for the password. By default, guys, it's Raspbian. So R A S P B E R R Y. And we're in the Pi, and now you are connected wirelessly to your Pi. No monitor, no keyboard. Everything you want to do, you can do here. So we'll put ls. 
And there's my desktops, my downloads, my music, public video documents. So it gave me the list. So that's basically it. You're able to get into the Pi. You got everything up and running. You're connected wirelessly. This is how you would set up headless mode. That's it guys. That's all you need to do to get it up and running so you can get your Raspberry Pi in headless mode. I think that's what they call it. Now, if you did have a regular Raspberry Pi with an ethernet cable and you didn't want to do this wirelessly like this, I was just showing this. All you have to do is connect it to Ethernet and put that SSH in there and then you could do everything just like this as well. But as you know, the Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't have an Ethernet port. So I just thought this would be a cool exercise, a cool little helper, if you will, for people that want to do it this way. This question came up quite a bit, especially with uh, HomeKit and HomeBridge. Doing setups like this, people didn't really have a way to connect it to a monitor or they just wanted to use a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I kept seeing this question come up over and over again and I thought it was a really helpful way trying to help you guys learn about the Raspberry Pi and adding stuff that I know about because I've been in the scenario myself and I figured I could help you guys out and push along. So if this helped you in any way, please like and subscribe. It helps me out drastically. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! Um, I just download Raspberry, uh, Raspbian. I just download Raspberry, uh, Raspberry, Raspberry, and Raspbian, Raspbian. I just download Raspberry, Raspberry, I can't speak. This isn't a Marvel movie, guys. There's no secret ending, no strategy or something. Just hit like and subscribe and maybe click on one of the videos above. So I don't know what to tell you.